Everyone is talking about MCP, but most people have no idea what they are. In this video, I will break down MCP, Model Context Protocol, in plain English. At the end of the video, we'll jump into N8 and compare it to AI agents. One built-in traditional one is MCP for seamless automation. By the end of this video, you will know exactly how to use MCP to transfer your AI automation. I will also give you a bonus tips where you need to go to get more information about MCP and what MCPs are currently available for you to use. If you're new to this channel, my name is Aftab. I partner with businesses who streamline their processes with no code tool. I have personally helped dozens of businesses set up efficient automation systems that are reliable and secure. Whether you are a small business owner or just curious about AI future, this video is for you. By the end of this video, you'll be able to know exactly what MCPs are and how you can utilize that in your workflow automation or AI agent. Now let's talk about model contracts protocol. MCP was created by Anthropic in 2023 to make it easier for AI agent to connect with different tools and services. MCP is like a set of standards, or you can call it a guide or framework, how your AI agent will connect to various different tools using the same standard framework or the guide. Before MCP, every tool has its own way of working. Before we dive into what MCP is and how we can utilize that in our agent, let's talk about what are some of the problems we're currently facing. Today, we have very powerful LLM or the large language model like ChatGPT. It's really good at giving you a lot of instruction on how to do certain things, but it can't actually take any action. If we want to get our LLM to take some action, then connect our LLM with no good tool platform like NA10. You probably seen tried setting up an NA10 AI agent, but connecting them to an external service like API, web scraping, or database is not easy and have to root, then might even have to write some code. Right now, if you want AI to do some useful things like sending an email, check your calendar, or scrape a website, or go find some leads on LinkedIn, you need the right API. Then read the complex API documentation, and sometimes those documentation is pretty lengthy. Then you have to set up your authentication, and then format the data the way the API documentation tells you to do. Then deal with errors. Once you establish an API connection, sometimes the third party where you're connecting to through an API, they will update their services. Then you have to go back and redo it. And the process is slow and often breaks. That's why MCB might be the future of AI automation. Let me take you to N8 and just show you basic agent, which is a calendar agent. And then you'll be able to answer what are some of the challenges we face generally when you're connecting to tools and access to different API. It's a very basic calendar agent. It's got a chat trigger. So that's how you communicate with the agent. It's got an open AI chat model. Then it has a simple memory, which is window buffer memory. It only remembers the most recent five chats. And then these are the different tools this AI agent is connected to mainly the Google Calendar tool where the agent is able to create a calendar event, a delete event and update event. Also, it's got an HTTP, I haven't really connected it. You can also connect this to a Brave Search API where you'll be able to search topics. So then if you look at the agent structure inside, it's heavily rely on the prompt. You've got to give an object to you, it's a role, and then what are some of the tasks it need to perform then also to make sure that the agent doesn't hallucinate and does not perform the wrong task then you have to provide some example then provide some guidelines and then guardrails to making sure it does not go outside the boundaries as you can see it's heavy to learn prompting to establish the api connection with brave search you need to read the api documentation and that's where we would get the, what methods you need to use to get the information it's for this it's kit there's a quite a few different options here where we can select then this is the endpoint so you get it from the documentation these tools have native connection to it and means it ends down the heavy lifting for us and we just simply connect our credential and we get access to this tool but they still have to fill out some information or some query parameter and sometimes you have to write some codes to get these tool works so now you can see the challenges that we face when we develop an ai agent in a traditional way also sometimes google or even the brave says might update their api document then you'll have to come back and update your AI agent, otherwise the agent will not work. So now it paints a picture around how complex it is when you're building an AI agent in NA10, connecting different tools. Finally, it's not 100%. In my experience, 10 to 20% time the agent will fail or gives you the wrong output. Now let's talk about model contracts protocol. MCP was created by Anthropic in 2023 to make it easier for AI agent to connect with different tools and services. MCP is like a set of standards, or you can call it a guide or framework, how your AI agent will connect to various different tools using the same standard framework or the guide. Before MCP, every tool has its own way of working. 
you saw our previous example where building an AI agent is much more complicated and time consuming because you need to understand all the API documentation and how you can connect to the various services. MCP fixes this by acting like an universal plug, letting AI talks to different tools in the same way. That means you don't need to worry about complex API setups. It is a big step towards making your AI agent smarter, useful AI agent that actually get things done. On screen you, you see two diagrams, one is a traditional AI. So with the help of these two diagrams, uh, I'm going to explain how MCP actually works. Looking at the diagram, we can see two distinct approaches to the AI agent architecture. Traditional AI agent on the left. In traditional AI agent system, the flow is very straightforward and it's fixed. User provide input to the AI, then the AI powered by the LLM like GPT-4 or Cloud process that input. Then the AI agent connects directly to various tools through hardcore API connection. Each tool, like you're sending email, read, read email, delete email, or search engine requires specific integration. The AI then produces output based on this direct interaction. The limitation here is that each tool connection must be individually configured, as we've seen previously, through the HTTP connection request and maintained. If the API for any tool changes, or if you want to add a new tool, you need to update the AI agent code directly. The AI agent on the right hand side, which got an MCP connection. This approach actually included a middleware or, or a different layer in, the, in between the AI agent and the API connection. So the process is still very similar. User, user provide input to the AI agent. The AI is still powered by the same LLM process. The input, instead of connecting directly to the tool, the AI agent communicate to the MCP server. The MCP server, like Gmail MCP and Brave Search MCP shown on the diagram handle this specific tool integration. The actual tool like sending email, read email or searching the web connected to the MCP server instead of directly connected to the AI yeah, agent. Looking at our email example in the diagram, the benefit of become very clear. Imagine Gmail updates its API and changing how the email are sent. With the traditional approach, you would have to go back and reconnect the AI agent directly. That might mean downtime risk. You need to take the AI agent offline and you won't be able to use that. With MCP, the Gmail MCP server need updating while the AI continue functioning normally. The same applies when Gmail adds new features, perhaps scheduling an email function. In the traditional model, the AI agent need a direct code update or API connection to access these features. With MCP, the Gmail server simply needs to add this capability in the list of available action in the MCP server, making it immediately accessible to the AI without changes to the agent itself. Now head back to the internet and, and look at an AI agent with an MCP server connected to. This is an AI agent. It's, it's a pretty typical AI agent. It has an open AI chat model. It's got a simple memory, same as the one we discussed before. In terms of tool point of view, we have two. One is an MCP client with a list of tool. Another one is execute tool. I'm not going to get into how you can connect this because I have a separate video which goes in depth how you can connect the various MCP into your NA10. Let me show you how MCP works. The other thing is in the tool, in the agent, I don't have any system prompt. Just like something we can write here like what tool you link that access to. But yeah, agent is figuring out that there's a, there's a tool called uh, list of tools. So you need going through that tools and getting the data. As you can see, it's returned to tools, Brave Web Search and Brave Local Search. It didn't go to the execution tool because it didn't really need to because it only had to go and get and the list of tool and that's what the user has asked. Now we can ask something like, what's the AI news today? As you can see, it's already, it's got a green tick. That's mean that the agent already collected the information. Now summarizing that information. That's the AI news today. Uh, obviously we're not going to go through each of them, but let me break it down how I actually will. We requested saying that what was the AI news today. It went into a user prompt. Then the agent had access to the list of tools, but in this case, it didn't execute the list of tools. It was saved on his memory already. So it accessed its memory rather than making a call. Realized that it's got two tools it can use. It translated the user query and using this MCP server executed that and that's what it populated the latest AI news. You can see from a previous example from previous AI agent where it was connected to a very, very different tool and through HTTP request or didn't have an MCP server. Before MCP, AI had to learn every tool separately using prompt, therefore prompt was too long and therefore the agent got confused and some got hallucinating. With MCP, AI can work with thousands of different tools effortlessly. So for example, if Brave Search tomorrow decided to add a different, a different tool, we don't have to go and connect anything because AI agent have already access to the list of tools. So it will do a search and see what's the updated list of tools and then use that tool appropriately if it needed. Here is the bonus tip. Head down to this website, smithy.ai. 
it's a repository for all the MCP available. It's community driven, so anyone can develop MCP and add it to this website, and then you, you will have access to it. How do you get access to it? So get into Brave Search, and it does talk about how to connect various tools and API. If you get your Brave Search and connect, it will give you a code you can put in your computer to connect Brave Search. So head down to this website and browse through. You'll be able to, you'll be surprised there's so many MCP currently available and you, you can use it and which will make your agent building journey much easier and smoother. Just to summarize, MCP is like a new USB AC for all AI, a universal way to connect AI to any tools. Traditional AI automates rely on massive manual API setups, the reading will and lengthy API documentation, but MCP makes it faster, more reliable and future proof. Thank you for staying with me. I know it's a very dry topics. It's very, it's a lot of text in front of the camera not building anything, but it's important uh, to understand the concept of MCP because I believe the MCP is dealing with the feature of the AI where you can use MCP to connect various tools. I also have upcoming NA10 tutorial where I built complex automation, take you through step by step how to build this automation. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe.